Let us begin with our first hymn. rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you of all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. You can come up if you want. (laughs) Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But but whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace and joyfully give an answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God has given you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, 
Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism, to be faithful and true? I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation, I do. Christine? Will you support the work of our gracious Lord that he has given this congregation with your prayers and gifts God has given you? I will with the help of God. Upon this, your confession, I acknowledge publicly that you are a member of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us rise for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing your daughter to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling her with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit that she may continue steadfast in the one true faith, in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I welcome you. The Bethlehem Lutheran Church. Christine and her grandson, let's welcome them to our church. Now, normally, I always forget certificates, <laughs> it's my forgetful memory. <laughs> so, okay, great. Thank you. just for you to remember. And see, now you're close. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Please be seated for our psalm. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Offer right sacrifices. And put your trust in the Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. Let us rise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Goodwill from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless 
you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you also be gotten, Son, we pray, O Lamb of God, our Savior, Take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are. and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit alone our Lord most high. In God the Father's glory Amen our glad reply. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 11 through 21. While the lame man, who was now healed, clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico, called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is enough, or through Jesus, has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson this morning comes from the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And anyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself 
as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness, as sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. This also is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that, is, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy, they were marveling. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me and the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Yeah. 
Spirit calls from every nation His new creation. I'm going to have the children come forward. I'm going to do this a little different. I'm going to have you guys sit down. Because guess who people like to see? Children, right? <laughs> Lots of them. Lots of them. So, what's, what's that? A turtle. A turtle. Well, it doesn't really say it. But it kind of says, my wife and my son and I, we... Well, they ran the bridge run, I walked, pretty much, okay? But I got this cool little metal, and it's actually got weight to it. But I didn't win. No. Oh, no. <laughs> no, way back. There was, what, 1,600 people in there? Yeah. Yeah. Not even in the first thousand. <laughs> but I still got a medal. I didn't, even, I didn't even make it seven miles. I made it five miles. I rode a bus for two miles. Because <laughs> if you don't get there in time, they pick you up on the bus. So what? <laughs> but I still got a medal. Now, what about with Jesus? Do we get a medal or the crown of life? You know, I know St. Paul says, you know, we strain forward to finish. And I know that's not the text for today. But I started thinking, how do we gain eternal life? Believing in him. Believing in him. Anything else? I mean... Asking for forgiveness. But what if I die before I ask for forgiveness, but I'm being faithful, and I believe in him and trust in him? Because you could die like that. Isn't it about being faithful? Didn't he pay the, the whole price on the cross that were justified before God? Right? But see, we always, we always want to mix being just before God, justified before God in our works. We, we want to we contribute. We want to do something for our salvation. You follow? You follow? You follow? You give me that look. <laughs> But he has done it all. So just have faith in him. Just trust in him. You guys are going into high school. Yeah. High school is fun. Junior high was like fantastic, right? It's only three, it's only three grades. It's only three grades? Mine was two. I didn't like it. I liked high school better. For me, high school is better. You're going, to, you're going in the summer. Why do I think? Because you're taller than me, that's why. <laughs> you know, you're going to have days that aren't going to be good. You might have those already, right? Starting tomorrow. Yeah. But you know, Jesus is with you. Even when you have bad days, right? He's with you. He's kind of like the bus picks you up and carries you. The two miles to get you across the finish line. We just trust in him. Just trust in him. Just continue, no matter what happens. Continue to have faith in him and trust in him. Those other works, he's going to work it out. Just keep the faith. Keep coming, praying, hearing about his word. And yes, applying it. And there'll be other ones where we'll be applying it. But you're applying it does not gain you 
salvation. It's your faith in him. Let's say a short prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for everything that you've done. You paid the final price. You paid, you've done everything for us. And we thank you for that. We ask you to just, just, just let us rest in that. Because we know you've, you've, got, you've done everything for us. And we just need to trust in you, having faith in you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Yeah, I was thinking of that this morning. Um, Because I had another children's sermon I was going to do. But he's done everything. So this morning we're going to talk about uh, miracles. Miracles kind of attract, right? In Jesus' day, they, they attracted crowds. Peter and John healed a lame man in the temple. Everybody came running. Wouldn't you? Would you go running if you saw in the temple that they were healing? I know miracles get a bad rap because of the television evangelists. But we would, I would come running at seeing miracles. In Peter's sermon that followed, that's our text for today in Acts, another amazing thing took place. More amazing than the miracle. God offered the forgiveness of sins to those who had killed Jesus. More amazing than a miracle, God offers forgiveness to all. So think about that a moment. Who's Jesus? What's that? Oh, I thought it. Our Lord and Savior. But who is he? And, and he was and he is God. And you wonder why children get confused. <laughs> Some adults get confused. But he is God. He is the creator. Himself becoming true man. A real man in order to save us. And in his ministry, what did he do? He helped people. He healed their diseases. He cast out their demons. He raised their dead and he forgave their sins. Especially the sins of tax collectors and sinners who knew that they really needed it. Let's get really down to earth because he, the tax collectors were the scum of the earth. <laughs> They're kind of like politicians. I mean, come on, no one really likes politicians. But what about the prostitutes? He forgave. Got really quiet. <laughs> he forgave sinners. Did Jesus do anything to deserve death? Answer is no. Pontius Pilate even knew it. I mean, he knew he was innocent, and he planned to release him. So what happened? What's the deal? The leaders were jealous and resented Jesus. They resented his rebukes to their pride and hypocrisy. 
He was a menace to their positions in power. So he had to go. They had to get him out of there. Because you got to remember, too, with Rome, the leaders in the church were worried that they were going to get totally shut down. Because Rome did not want an uprising. And if they got shut down, there goes their money train. And their power is gone. And the people? What about the ordinary people? Palm Sunday, they're waving branches and they're all happy. That didn't last long. <laughs> Not long at all. A few days later, <laughs> screaming, crucify him, Mark 15, 13. And then they're choosing Barabbas. Oh, he's an upstanding character. <laughs> you ever watch the movie? Uh, uh, now, what's the name of the movie? Huh. The modern one. Jesus? Not the chosen. It's older than that. Thank you. Passion of the Christ. I mean, the depiction of Barabbas is, <laughs> he's not a guy you want to be seen with. Not a good guy. But they choose him. A murderer. <laughs> instead of Jesus. They wanted him dead. And that's what they got. In short, as Peter told them, you killed the author of life. Can you imagine a worse sin? They killed the author of life. They killed God and his son Jesus. Even Adam and Eve choosing a piece of fruit. That doesn't seem very bad. But they were thrown out of the garden for it, for disobeying. And these people killed the author of life. But instead of delivering God's curse, what does Peter say? Repent, therefore, and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. Wiped out, erased, gone for good. How many of you can remember the sin that was uh, done against you 20 years ago? No one wants to answer. We can remember every single detail at least 10 years ago about what someone did to us, especially if it was bad. Don't raise your hand, but anybody in here divorced way back? Do you remember what they did to you? I do. When you have the carpet ripped out in front of you or from under you you remember you might not be holding it against them but we remember but God forgets he remembers no more after we confess it's like it never even existed you know blot it out you guys remember uh, correction ink white out thank you <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen that stuff. Um, it's gone. It's gone. You remember the uh, IBM typewriters? The little ball? You go back and correct. It's gone. 
Now, if you, if you go back to the ribbon, yeah, you're going to see it. But with God, there's no ribbon. There's no evidence. It's gone. Your sin is gone. It is no more. So we can have a clear conscience. Those sins don't have to bother us because they are completely gone. Forgiveness is just that. Our sin is gone forever. Forgiveness for their sin or any sin is possible for one reason only. The kind of God that God is. For when Adam and Eve sinned first, and then the rest of us followed right along to fill up the measure of man's wickedness, God acted to save. His mercy and love were greater than the sin of Peter's hearers. Even this sin of killing God's son and his mercy and love are greater than our sins. Not only did he promise, starting with Adam and Eve, that he would save us sinners, but he also kept his promise and sent his son, who did die, but on the third day rose. We know that. Jesus was the great sin bearer. Our sin, our death, our punishment, our hell, he bore that. But when he rose from the dead, from the grave, he had won. Not sin, not death, and not hell had won. But Jesus had won. Sin had been blotted out. Permanently white-outed. I know that's not good English. And that's what Peter was offering even those who had killed Jesus. The very worst sin conquered and wiped clean in Jesus' resurrection. Some sins think, you know, too big to forgive. There are many of us here. Maybe all of us who have a sin that's too big to forget. Perhaps it's something really embarrassing or something really, uh, I could get one of those uh, magazines that write those juicy columns. Really scandalous that nobody knows except us. And we can't forget. Or maybe it's a recurring sin that we can't get over. We do it again and again and again. Maybe it's a neighbor, a friend, a relative. Maybe it's when we bump into somebody at, on the street who's not real shiny and bright. Sometimes it's those sins of thought. Might not even be word, maybe it's word. Might not even be deed, but maybe it's deed. But maybe it's just thought. Sins can trouble us. They can haunt us. They can refuse to leave us alone. Sometimes they can leave us wondering, does God really forgive sin? Yes, he does. 
That's the answer of this text. There is no sin too, too big to forgive, even though we never forget it. God forgave David, an adulterer, a murderer. Yeah, we're talking about King David. Not a good guy. He forgave Paul, who persecuted Christians. He even forgave Peter for denying him three times. And it was this same Peter who held out forgiveness and times of refreshing from God, who would send Jesus back and restore all things to these very people who had killed the author of life. Yes, they killed him, but he didn't stay dead. He is risen. He is risen I forgot to allow you. <laughs> Easter is God's answer to sin. Easter is something we should celebrate every Sunday, every day of the week. <laughs> but it's God's answer to sin, yours, mine, all of it. And there's a lot of it. The whole world is full of sin. And history has recorded it. Look what occurred yesterday. And more things like that are going to occur. They've been occurring for thousands of years. And they will continue. But there's something greater than sin, and it's part of history too. For God, almighty and all gracious, has entered our world in the person of his son to redeem us, to die and to rise again, and to blot out all of our sins. And that is truly amazing. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your presence we find fullness of joy. And by your right hand, Christ Jesus, you win and deliver peace forevermore. In the midst of this world's sins and sorrows, give us peace in the knowledge of his salvation and confident hope in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of his cross, you have made us your children and gathered us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. In Jesus' name.
in Jesus' name among us and all, among all the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, give peace, Lord, to our homes and enliven them with Christ's resurrect, resurrected life. Give the forgiveness of sins that they may reign among husbands, wives, parents, children. That they may reign amongst Iran and other Muslim countries. That they would reign in Israel. That they would reign in every country around the earth. That people would know you. That they would know your son Jesus. And know his forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, preserve our nation and its leaders, especially Joseph, our president, and Ron, our governor. Preserve order and decency in this fallen world by their hands and restrain the sins and deceptions of the lawless that we may practice righteousness while awaiting the eternal peace promised in Christ's wounds alone. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, you have compassion on those who are afflicted. Remember and have mercy on Edison, Linda and Chester, Bob, Warren, Joe, and all those in need of your healing and deliverance. Lord, in your mercy, Dear Heavenly Father, our prayer now and really every single day is that all would know your Son, Jesus. That all would reach out to him. Reveal to the nations the only way to peace, which is through Christ. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious upon you. The Lord look down upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Raul. Raul. Happy birthday. Um, the curses have given the flowers in, in honor of uh, Raul's birthday. Uh, birthdays today, Raul, uh, some guy named Pastor Glander, Holly Bell, <laughs> Beverly uh, Kagoy, and Joy Kabaki. Let's sing happy birthday to our friends. Happy birthday. To you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear friends, happy birthday to you, God's blessings on you, God's blessings on you, God's blessings, dear friends, God's blessings on you.
So refreshments after the service. Um, my wife made an apple type cake thing, German something. I can't remember what it's called. And then we have leftovers from Thursday. Ham, beans, gratin potatoes, desserts. So we're, what's that? I don't know, I wasn't here. 140, that's good. That's really good. And you wonder where I was. I was running the race. Well, I was walking the race. <laughs> Let's be honest. We're riding a bus. Yeah. I knew that was going to happen. That was going to be riding a bus. No, it was. <laughs> it was a full bus. It was kind of interesting because they said before, if you don't get on the bus, you got to get on the bus because they need to open the road. And there was one guy who didn't want to get on the bus. Well, they had a sheriff's deputy on the bus. <laughs> he got on the bus. <laughs> they got to open the road. You know, they can only have it closed for three hours. You know, it's, a major, it's the only major road going through there. Oh, let's see here. Um, Bible study, Sunday school, um, today after the service. Uh, Bible study on Wednesday, yes, we are almost done with Ezekiel. We're getting towards the end, believe it or not. Hasn't quite been a year. <laughs> Had a lot of holidays in between there. The ham dinner on Thursday raised $975. So that's after the expenses. So thanks be to God for that. Um, anybody that helps, stand up. I was going to say, I know they had to be worn one. <laughs> we thank God for all the volunteers that, <laughs> most definitely. Oh, let's see here. Uh, council meets um, after Bible study refreshments. So anybody that's in council, please stay. LWML, luncheon, Tuesday at 1230 at Buckingham Farms. I don't know if anybody's been to Buckingham Farms. Did I skip right by? Thank you. Oh, man, I need new eyes. That's really bad because I'm, I'm still looking for them. It's not on mine. <laughs> Jeff and Linda Kirsch. Thank you. 42 years. <laughs> Jeff, can I ask you what your secret is? <laughs> we, th we, th we thank God. I mean, that's... That's pretty much it. Is. Keep your faith in God. You know, we can do great things because of Him who died for us. Um, so, council meets, luncheon, VBS meets the 17th at 9.30 a.m. So, anybody that's involved with the or wants to be involved with VBS, um, remember April 17th at 9.30 a.m. and we'll be meeting, okay? That's Wednesday, right? Yep. Yeah, so Wednesday. Anything else I'm missing? Is it not on your list to the movie night next week, next Sunday, movie night? No, but I, but I did read it somewhere else. Movie night, what's the movie tonight? It's not next, tonight. Week. Next, Sunday. next week? Next Sunday, you know the movie? Let me try to show Running the Bases. Running the Bases. Yeah. So that'll be good. Next, next Sunday, starting at 4? 6. 6, starting at 6. Rupert Floats, Popcorn, 5.30. Rupert Floats, Popcorn, popcorn 5.30. Yep. Don't miss the Rupert Floats. They're good.
twice a year. And this is actually the first time that we've done it on the last week of the month. I mean, the last month of the winter. Because we won't be having meetings until October again this year. We always do those meetings at that time through the winter. So um, we're inviting all of you ladies to come to this lunch. But we need to know the, num the number of those people before we go so that we can let them know at the restaurant. And of course, the restaurant is going to be at a big place. It's the uh, Buckingham Farms restaurant. You can, if you'd like to go, please. And if you have not already given us your name, please do so before you leave today so that we can make sure we have all of you ready to be there. And uh, we will uh, ask you if you want to come. We will be serving, we'll be getting there at 12.30 to serve our luncheon. And in order to do that, you can come here uh, that morning and be here by noon if you'd like, and we can go in cars together to the restaurant then from here at the church. Go there for lunch and then come back to get your car and go home again or we can drop you off or whatever we need to do. But we want you to be ready for that. And we have two ladies that we know from Christ the King who are going to be going. Um, we, we were happy to see that they were able to come. And um, we have as many of you as you can come, we would love to come. So that's what I wanted to say to you. But please, uh, before you leave today, let us know, make sure we've got your name so that we uh, can have it all ready to go for the people at the, at the uh, restaurant. Okay? The food is really good there. Yeah. So. Anything else? Do you ever... Oh, my wife left. We're looking forward to it. It's, it's just a, uh, it's a fun day. It's not a meeting. It's a fun day when we can all talk to each other. Okay? So if you haven't gotten your picture taken, see my wife. She's back in the fellowship hall getting some things ready. Go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.